Hi everybody! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world's most awkward cooking channel on YouTube! Anyway, <laughs> do you like that new introduction? I really hope so. And if you don't, that's okay. My feelings will not be hurt. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Mara and I run The Funky Spork. It is part blog, part vlog, part everything else. And what I do is I develop amazing, original, tasty recipes and promote local food systems. So deliciousness and local food is definitely the epicenter of what this awesome platform is about. So for today's video, I actually want to showcase a really incredibly delicious and easy recipe to prepare. This is going to be a really great recipe if you are feeling really lazy, you don't want to get dishes dirty, and you want something yummy and practical for your family and yourselves. And one of the best parts about this particular recipe is that it's a one pot dish. Yay, 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 yay. For today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a really amazing, delicious, creamy black bean and pasta skillet. It's scrumptious, it's yummy, and also for all of you plant-based folks out there, this recipe is vegan. So a lot of you, like myself, are in quarantine or you're staying at home because you want to make sure that you are protecting yourselves and your family members from either contracting or spreading the COVID-19 virus. And for whatever reason, you may not have had time to go out and get groceries from the grocery store because a lot of shelves are really empty right now and it's just a real thing. So I feel like you might really, really like this dish because most of the ingredients you might already have in your pantries. And by the way, if there's an ingredient that I list within this recipe that you don't have, please, please, please feel free to substitute that. So anyway, let's get started. So like every tutorial I do, I like to show you the ingredients that are involved with this particular recipe. So for this black bean and pasta skillet, I personally went with a rotini pasta. I just really love the texture of the pasta. I think it's a lot of fun, but if you happen to have something else like macaroni or shells or even um, like a linguine, that's totally fine too. Um, it calls for black beans, so definitely get those on hand. Coconut milk definitely gives us a nice boost of creaminess. Man, <laughs> tomato paste, some yummy vegetables, and it's going to include onion, bell pepper, tomato, fresh spinach, or kale. You can also include garlic cloves, and that's what my original recipe calls for, but I ran out of garlic cloves, so I'm using garlic powder. Now this recipe also calls for taco seasoning. It's going to give this particular dish that nice extra boost of flavor and a nice southwestern twist. So you can go with one of a couple options. Either you can A, use some store-bought taco seasoning if you are feeling extra lazy. I won't judge you, I promise. Or you can go with B and opt for a homemade taco seasoning and for my taco seasoning i have the ingredients listed in my blog post but if you don't feel like watching that this literally includes salt i used a himalayan sea salt but whatever you have black pepper garlic powder smoked paprika cumin and red chili powder a lot of these ingredients you might already have in your pantry but once again if you don't have any of these and you might have one of those 50 cent packets of taco seasoning in your pantry and you need to use that before the expiration date approaches go ahead you do you that's fine you're also going to want water for this particular recipe too so one of the first things you're going to want to do is take your pepper onion and tomato and then you dice each of these yummy veggies into half inch cubes personally i like to go ahead and dice and prep all my veggies. To me, that's probably gonna be one of the hardest parts of this recipe. I like to do that first, get that over with, and then set that to the side so then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so my induction burner is quite loud, but what I went ahead and did was 
I set this to about medium high. If you have a regular stove top, go ahead and set this to medium high. If you have an induction burner, kind of keep it on the medium range. It's definitely going to depend on the type of induction burner you use, but this one heats up very quickly and very hot, so I find that medium range works well. So I just have a little bit of grapeseed oil in this particular pot, but if you prefer any other type of cooking oil, go ahead and use that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that heat up for a second. It's pretty good. Remember all these diced veggies we went ahead and diced together? Well now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and add them into this pot. Oh, as you see right now, if you can hear it and hopefully smell it, um, all my veggies are beginning to saute. And the goal is to saute these veggies for about six to seven minutes until the onions begin to sweat and start to turn translucent. You don't want them to caramelize. So just keep an eye on that and stir frequently. It smells so good. I mean, really folks, one pot cooking is the best thing ever because for us lazy folks, it's less dishes to wash. And plus, who doesn't want the perfect bite of all ingredients in one forkful? That'd be crazy. So now we are ready for the next step. And that next step is going to be this. I'm gonna go ahead and start to add my water. And this recipe that I'm making is going to be for six portions, for six nice servings of this particular dish. So I added about two cups of water and I'll put those exact measurements below. So as you see, I went ahead and added water, but that's not where we stop. We're gonna add a few other additional ingredients. You really want the flavors to come out of this like nothing before. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings to this water mixture. And I'm adding the whole jar of tomato paste. I personally really love the flavor of tomatoes and we're definitely gonna get some from the diced tomatoes, but I just like the richness of this tomato paste. This is only four ounces. Um, if you're not a fan of tomato paste, you don't have to add it. If you want to add a little bit less, go ahead and feel free to do so. So really, it's going to be up to you. So we want to go ahead and give this mixture a nice, nice stir. And we want this to come to a rolling, rolling boil. Because once it comes to that rolling boil, we're actually going to go ahead and add the pasta to this. Does that sound crazy to you? Just stick around, you'll see why. Now I'm going to add just a pinch more water because this induction burner is so hot and things start to evaporate very quickly. So I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cup more water. It smells really good. I don't know if you can see it, but now this lovely, lovely infused broth mixture has finally reached that boiling point that I was looking for. I was looking for that nice rolling boil. And you know what my secret is to getting to that point? During this point, because I don't have a lot of patience, I actually temporarily crank the heat to maximum high to really speed up that boiling point. And then once I reach that boiling point, I bring it back down to that medium high setting. Okay, now folks, so the next part of this recipe is to add this nice little box of rotini pasta into the mixture. And no, I was not sponsored by Publix. Now I know what some of you folks are wondering. Oh wow, Mara. You're adding the pasta into that broth, but are you planning to drain all of that flavorful broth? You just wasted all those peppers and all those spices and tomato sauce because you're supposed to drain pasta once it's done cooking, duh. Actually, in this particular instance, we're gonna go ahead and boil this pasta down until all of the excess water is evaporated. And that takes about 10 to 12 minutes. So we just wait patiently for that to occur. And then we just chill here. We become friends, we talk about each other's lives, our hopes and dreams. 
So during this portion, just a little update. I actually like to go ahead and let the pasta cook typically at a higher temperature point. So you can do absolute high temperature, but I like to flirt somewhere between that medium high, high, high range. So it's not quite at the maximum heat, but it's a little bit below that. So once again, that'll speed up the cooking time and then the excess water will evaporate quicker as well. So we've gotten to a point in this particular dish where a lot of that broth, I would say the majority of it has boiled down. I didn't want this pasta to completely dry because as you see here, take a look at that. Take a look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. It is beautiful. It has absorbed a lot of that sauce and you know what the beauty of doing it in this method is? If you use the right amounts of water, the pasta does not get soggy. But as yummy as this dish looks, it's not over yet. What's a black bean dish without black beans? I like to add these at the end because if I were to have added the black beans during the boiling process, they would have turned into mush. And I love the texture of black beans and I don't want to do that to the integrity of this dish. By the way, when I was preparing this particular dish, I had already drained the black beans. I was using canned black beans, but if you happen to soak them yourself, that's great as well. But I'm using what I have, you know what I mean? I mean, look how simple that is. Look how simple. This last ingredient is going just to give this particular dish an extra dose of delicious savory creaminess. And that is the addition of regular coconut oil. Now I'm only going to add half of a can of this and then use the other half for another recipe. I like the flavor dimension that this gives this particular dish. Now, if you are allergic to coconut or you're just not a fan, you don't have to add it. But look at that, everybody. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Look how good that looks. Oh my gosh, it looks so creamy. It looks like cheese, but it's not. <laughs> Okay, so here's the moment of truth. It smells incredible. It looks incredible. Look at all this creaminess from the pasta. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a nice scoop. So this over here has, oh, let me add some avocado to that. So this is what we would call the perfect bite. This has a little bit of pasta, bell pepper, tomato, onion, black beans, and that amazing sauce and the spinach. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a try. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is amazing. This is very good. This could wind up just becoming an eating ASMR video, but that's not the point of this. This is honestly a dish that is so simple and so easy to make. This is one that you're going to want to add to your regular list of recipes. Well, folks, if you like my content, please, please, please help me by uh, clicking that like button and subscribing to my video and press that bell button for more notifications. I also run a blog with all of my amazing recipes and farm to spork features where I feature local players in our food systems processes. And that can be found at www.thefunkyspork.com. I also do have a Patreon as well. So if you're really moved by my content and want to support me, please go ahead and support my Patreon channel for just a couple dollars a month, maybe $2 a month. It would mean the world to me. Your support will help me continue to produce all the content you see today and moving forward for days and days and years and years and years to come. Well, that's all I have for today. I'm gonna go ahead and finish eating the rest of my meal. Folks, I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week, and I will see you all again for the next segment. Until next time, bye folks. Stay happy and stay funky.